So Susan, when you came to Hood River, uh, you kind of got sucked in by a guy and that kind of brought you here. <laughs> yeah. um, but were you doing, were you windsurfing and taking advantage of the, the local sports that we're known for? Yes, that's why we came and, okay. and he taught me to windsurf here and mountain bike and snowboard. Do all those things. Do you yeah. still do those? Yes. Yeah. Have I you switched do. to kiting yet? No. No. Are you gonna? <laughs> no. I'm not either. I'm going to stick with windsurfing. Yeah. It's like everybody keeps converting over and it looks like a lot of fun, but I think I'm going to just stick with I windsurfing. I agree. It's, yeah. It looks fun, but I'm good. Yeah. yeah. You're, yeah. you're comfortable where yeah, you're at. Totally. So tell me then how you got involved with Columbia Gorge Dance Academy and then ultimately ended up owning it. How does that happen? Well, I was looking for a place to dance and I was driving into Portland and taking class there a little bit, but that drive got old. So I was, there was a studio, a local studio called The Workout mm -hmm. and it was up in the Heights and it was owned by Charlotte Arnold and it was ballet and tap studio and that's all I could get was ballet, which I grew to appreciate the art as an adult. So I was taking class there and Charlotte approached me one day and said, would you like to teach jazz here? And I said, sure. So I started teaching there, started with five students, and as the years went by and the recitals went by, I got more and more students. And in 1999, she said that she wanted to retire and sell the studio, and I was interested in purchasing it, so I did. So were there other people that were also interested, or was, was it just something she mentioned to you and the two of you worked it out? And she mentioned it to um, the ballet instructors as well, but. I don't think they were up think, for that. No, it's the studio operates. Everybody is a independent contractors in the okay. studio. So you you kind of own your own program anyway. But I was interested in running the whole thing, the whole show. Yeah. So how many instructors do you actually have that are freelancing through your studio? There's nine of us. Nine. Yeah. Wow. There's that much interest in dance. Yes, we have a huge population now. And I know you're not the only, you know, dance studio in the Gorge either, so that really speaks to this, I guess, it, art form. Yeah, and our instructors as well. The women that work there are very talented, dedicated instructors. So, so. what does it take to be, who, I guess, let me back up a little bit. Who is interested in dance? Like, who are the people that are coming to you, are coming to your instructors? And I mean, this isn't like, well, you know, I've always thought about playing the guitar. I think I'd like to take lessons. I mean, you have to have more than that. It's got to be sort of within you, doesn't it? Or not so much? Not so much. You can show up and at any age, really, and say, I'm interested. And some kids do it recreationally. Some kids take it very seriously and pursue it in college. So we kind of service everybody that, that wants to give it a try. Yeah. We're there. What about guys? You've got, do you have guys that come in? We do have a few that will withstand probably some peer pressure and stick with it. Uh -huh. We've offered a few straight boy classes and those will go for about a year. They don't typically hang around too long, but yeah. we have a few that are, that are hanging around. Wow. And that we really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a, it's a super disciplined art form. I mean, you just the, the little bit that I know of it and the stuff that I've seen, you have to, and I, okay, the stuff that I've seen, I'm referring to like these shows like Dancing with the Stars and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, you see these people progress rapidly, but there's so much that I don't understand how they get from being somebody who was, you know, an actress or whatever, to being somebody who's ballroom dancing and doing all of this stuff. I mean, is that realistic? <laughs> yeah, I think they're training about eight hours every day. Okay. So it takes a quite a bit of training. You have to really put some hours in into the studio. Do people from shows like that get interested in dance? Do you are you finding? Have those shows done anything as far as oh, sort of so pull people out? Oh, so you think you can out? dance is yeah. really had a big impact really? on, yes. So people definitely. come in and actually mention that? Yes. So what do yes. they come in and tell you? Like, oh, I was watching this and it really sort of inspired me to come and talk to you and I really want to do this. Yeah, well, they'll say, I saw contemporary dance on So You Think You Can Dance, do you offer that? Or I see what hip hop looks like, I want to take hip hop, I want to do that. Okay. 
And I noticed on your website that you have some of the different instructors seem to specialize in different forms of dance. And one of um, your instructors, I think it was Krista, um, does hip hop. Yes. Um, that seems interesting to me for two reasons. One, because I think of hip hop as, um, I guess, what I think of hip hop is probably a stereotype. But two, um, the girls that were involved in the hip hop did not look like the stereotypical hip hop <laughs> dancers that I that I would think of either. So, what exactly? What are you? What's? What are you guys teaching when you teach hip hop? Well, Krista is, lives in Portland and comes out on Wednesday, and she dances with the hip hop company in Portland. Okay. So she has a lot of exposure to hip hop, and it's it's a combination, I think, using hip hop music and sort of fusing break dance, popping, locking, and the Michael Jackson look kind of all together to create hip hop dance. Okay. Cuz it's it's definitely her specialty. So there's a there's a whole process to all of the moves and everything like that and everything's very intentional. Yes, okay. definite. So you said pop and lock, <laughs> I which which I have that. to laugh at because <laughs> I there was I don't know who sang the song, but they 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 in the lyrics say something about pop and lock. So that's actually a move or a Well, a it's a dance form. Popping dance. is an actual form of dance and locking is a form of dance. Really? And crumping and break dancing. And I think all those things are sort of combined to create hip hop okay. dance. That's what I believe that that's happened. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, when we come back from the break, I want to talk a little bit about what all of this has done to you and how, how this has maybe changed you and um, where, where, where this is, you know, taking your life. So we'll talk about some of those things when we come back. Be right back. When we return. If they're just going to come in for jazz and hip hop, they can come in at any age and sort of hop in a class with their peers.